Hello, listeners, and welcome back to episode six. Oh my God, I cannot believe it's episode six. It's the second to last episode of the season. This has been really fun. Like, honestly, the coolest experience that I've had in a really long time. I was going to say of 2024, but that doesn't feel very meaningful because it is, in fact, January as I'm recording this. But it has been the coolest experience of 2024 so far, yes. But also, Probably, yeah, for a while. I've had so much fun doing this, and I hope that you have enjoyed listening along the way. We Episode 6 is going to be a riveting one, team. Okay, we're going to talk, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty. It is titled Legal Latte, Navigating Regulations and Compliance. So for those of you who have decided to pause this episode, skip it, and listen next week, I see you, and I know what you're doing, and you're impacting the numbers. So just come on. Hit play. Let's do this. Let's keep it going. God, I feel like this is such an important topic, specifically as we enter into a new year and there are more and more new regulations being proposed at what feels like every single day in counties and states. And so I think it's worth a listen. Okay. And also, as always, hopefully, we're going to have fun together. Welcome back to Shooting the Breeze with Breezeway, where we breeze through tips and tricks for property managers in just a couple minutes. I'm not going to commit to 90 seconds, okay? Especially today. Because listeners, we have something very exciting to talk to you about and we are going to be highlighting the guidebook in Breezeway. So, Corinne, I'm just, I really want to pass the mic over to you, but before you highlight guide, I need to tell you my favorite two parts of guide. Okay, ready? Number one, The amount of phone calls that we get from guests that have checked in or prior to using Breezeway's guidebook was just astronomical. And so many of these questions were really redundant and taking so much of our team's time. Like, where can I find the coffee maker? Does this property have a coffee maker? Do you have a hand? You would not believe. I mean, all the listeners here, we understand we're in the industry. So being able to solve for those calls and reduce our call volumes by having our guests able to access that information readily and easily is very, very helpful. The second thing that I want to say, in Jackson, where I'm located, Jackson, Wyoming, we have this, you know, we like locals here, okay? But we also love our guests. But we want our guests to experience life in Jackson like a local. And being able to input information about our local area into guide and our guests be able to experience this town that we know and love so much like a local has been so helpful for us. I don't know if you actually even need to hear any other reasons other than my two, but if you have some reasons why it's cool, Corinne, I could be I I could be swayed to allowing you to, you know, share those with me. So you stole some of mine. <laughs> the good news is that the guide product is like it's it's pretty incredible. It's one of our newer products and the team has spent a, a ton of time just continuing to add and add really great functionality to it. So Um, I agree. Those are both very amazing aspects of it. The local recommendations was something that people were clamoring for and they've been loving it. I would say the two things that I love about guide are one, the, the fact that it's like dynamic and it really surfaces the right information to the guests at the right points of their stay. So if you're not there yet, it's giving you the information about how do you get to the property? What time is check-in? What's the address of the property? What's your door code to get into the property? What's, you know, and then once you're there, what's the Wi-Fi? You know, where do you find the modem? All of that stuff. Or as you're nearing checkout, like checkout time, checkout instructions, all of that. So you're getting the right information at the right points of your stay, which is always really incredible and, and personalized to that particular guest. And then from a manager perspective, you know, there's so many companies nowadays that are operating in different markets or who have different levels of homes within their portfolio and and maybe want to surface different experiences or different offerings or maybe have different recommendations that they would sort of match with different properties. And so one of the most recent improvements was also the ability to have different versions of the guide that are associated with different properties. So now being able to, to have multiple templates of the guide within your account has been really exciting. So in addition to the two of yours and probably many others that, that listeners have, I would say those are some of my favorite features of the guide. And, and we're really excited about you know having added this into our portfolio of offerings for clients. 
honestly, the limit just does not exist when it comes to the guide So and tips for using it. So thank you so much, Corinne. I am excited to dive into even more breezy solutions next week shooting the breeze thank you guys so much for tuning in and make sure you go to breezeway.io slash espressos to learn more about breezeway sign up and receive a hundred dollars off see you soon so today i really want to talk about in the beginning i like to always kind of tell a little bit of a story last week we talked about the ceo of solo stove which was absolutely wild this week i want to talk to you about snowboarding. Okay. So this is going to be very quick. I am from Florida, which you all know this by now, and moved out to Jackson Hole. And I have had, I learned to snowboard at the age of 29, which has been like such a difficult and trying experience of my life. And the first time I ever went out, my boyfriend has actually been snowboarding for like 17, 18, something insane, right? Like he's just so annoying when we go out, like not annoying because he's incredible and that's annoying to me. He's also been this great teacher, but he, I went out first day ever, fell, broke my tailbone. First bone I had ever broken, age of 29, had to sit on a donut for six weeks. It was so terrible. And snowboarding has really been this like, I don't know, this testing experience for me that is challenging in a very physical way because I think so much of my challenges day to day are on the mental side. And honestly, like it's kind of a metaphor for work to me and has been. The industry for a while kind of became this like autopilot for me, right? Like it wasn't much of a mental challenge anymore. It kind of felt like the same thing happens on this cycle consistently, right? Like, okay, I know that this time of year is coming up, so we need to start marketing for this. And okay, this is going to be our busy season, so we should expect this. And snowboarding really like, I don't know, it helped me come out of this physical rut that I was having in a way that 2023 helped me come out of a mental rut that I was having with the industry. I think so much happened last year. COVID in general, yes. But last year really felt like, okay, things are different now. We're going back to this new normal. There are 500 new vendors out. There are so many incredible operators that I want to be like in the space or be friends with. And I don't know, it felt like a mental challenge that I hadn't experienced in a while. And I don't know. I feel very grateful for snowboarding and for the industry in 2023. And definitely as we go into 2024, I will say that I did complete a double black diamond at the end of last season after learning how to snowboard and breaking my tailbone at the beginning of the year. And I did lose my cell phone. So I had to buy an entirely new iPhone because I side slipped and fell the majority of the way. But we're getting better, okay? Just like things are getting, I'm getting into the back of the swing of things, back into, back into the swing of things. That's what it is. I clearly don't play golf either. Anyway, go out there, do a physical activity that's going to challenge you. Let's talk about regulation, okay? Now, here comes the really fun stuff. So we are going to talk a lot today about the world of regulation and compliance, why it matters things that we're facing as operators, and what we can do to solve for the regulation issues that are starting to come up, or at least create a plan to solve for those. Uh, My coffee of the day is a very cold peppermint tea at this point, which I'll tell you, peppermint tea is not terrible cold, but it's also not great. I do wish that I was drinking a steaming hot latte which is crazy. Like in the world of coffee, you want to make sure that you're not serving it too hot. And I am the type of person that is like, if my tongue is not going to fall off and just completely burn to a crisp, then I don't want it. Which is why the Ember Mug is very helpful today. I'm not drinking out of my Ember Mug. So my cold tongue is very sad. So really five major points that I want to dive into today. Number one, alliance. Okay. So In the past 18 months, here in Jackson, we have developed an alliance called the Jackson Hole Lodging Association, which has been incredible in discussing and fighting regulation that we have faced in our area. And I know that there are so many alliances that have formed over the past, honestly, like two to three years. If you don't already have one in your community, or if you do and you're not a part of it, I strongly encourage 
being a part of your local association or alliance that has formed in your community. And if one doesn't exist, I strongly should suggest reaching out to competitors in your area and forming an alliance. There are so many benefits of joining or creating an alliance. Number one, like sharing ideas in our community has been so helpful personally. Like whether it is, hey, our spring is looking kind of soft. Like what does your spring look like? And this doesn't have to be here's exactly what we're charging, right? Like I think there is a resistance to maybe share what could be perceived as secrets. But ultimately, like we can see this information anyway on our competitors' websites. And I think it and also like we're all kind of doing the same thing at the end of the day. So I think creating a friendship and an alliance with your local competitors ultimately works out in your favor in the end. And if you are facing regulation already or if you haven't and you likely will down the road, which I think all of us at some point will, having these relationships and collaborating with other even like hosts or property managers is so, so helpful. And it allows you to stay ahead of legal aspects of this unfortunate side of the business that we face. So sharing insights and ideas and collaborating is really, really important, but also working together on regulatory challenges. I think it's really helpful when it's not just you, right? Like before this, you're the one who's looking up what regulation you're facing, how to fight it, what relationships you need to build with your local chamber of commerce or officials in order to fight this regulation. And if you have alliance and people that you can lean on, you can assign different tasks out to different members. It's been so helpful for us. We typically, if we're facing any type of regulatory challenges, which we have been over the course of the last like 18 months or so, we were meeting on a biweekly basis. Now we're meeting once a month, right? Like regulation has been introduced in our community. We've all talked about it. We understand the impacts that it will have on our businesses. And now like we meet once a month and we'll talk about, hey, what is summer looking like for you guys? Is there anything that we can help with in terms of marketing to get more people to our area? Should we meet with the Chamber of Commerce? Or honestly, like we will talk about like owners or guests that are transitioning from program to program and give each other a heads up like, hey, we just had this guest try to stay with us and it was completely fraud and They're like renting out a unit and throwing massive parties just so you know, like if you get this name come across your desk, like do not rent to them. So it's been great for us to build these relationships and like we'll go out and have a glass of wine together after work. It's also someone to kind of lean on when times are difficult in terms of just like the industry being really, really exhausted. But it's also given us this power in numbers, which I think is really important. And you can decide if you are on the board of this alliance, like how much involvement you want to have. Of course, if you're on the board, it's going to be more time for you. You're going to have to hold some type of responsibility and really be in more meetings. If you don't have the time to be on the board, just go to meetings that are happening if they're happening once a month or once a quarter for an alliance or a association that's existing in your community. And the other recommendation that I would make is Talk to the Alliance about including other members of the community if you'd like. So whether that be vendors who really depend on short-term rentals in order to operate effectively and with a profitable business, or maybe it's hoteliers in the community who might not be facing regulation, but they are part of your lodging community and could be a great source of information and just like strengthen numbers again. We also will lean a lot on our real estate community to be a part of these regulatory and alliance meetings, they obviously are dealing with so many investors in the area that they need the short-term rental community to thrive in order for their business to perform. So they have been great to us. Once you have your alliance formed or once you join an alliance, you're going to want to have some involvement in your local chamber and with your local officials. So whether that is city council, attending city council meetings, it's really every community is different. If you need more information on who's who in your community, who those officials are that you need to build these relationships with, go to your local chamber of commerce or your local tourism board, whether that is, they're typically called destination marketing organizations or DMOs. So if it's visit Park City or the Park City Travel and Tourism Board, whatever it is for your community, make sure that you're keeping up to date with who is who at the tourism board and any events that they might have being a part of that. They are spending marketing dollars to get people to come to your destination. So building an alliance with that tourism board is going to be important. 
And with the Chamber of Commerce, I'm sure everybody's already a member of your local Chamber of Commerce, but make sure that you are going to those Chamber events and building relationships when regulation comes up, which in some communities it hasn't yet, right? Like you haven't faced any regulation. There really isn't a side eye being made at short-term rental operators. I do believe that it will come to almost every single short-term rental community at some point. I hope that's not a bad omen, but I do think it's true, right? Like more and more people are starting to talk about short-term rentals. And I think we're just continuing to have this reputation where we're ruining communities or stealing housing. And they're, the purpose of this episode is to change that narrative in our communities. And I do think that that is possible. This is just being prepared for when it happens. And if it already is happening in your community, this is what you can do to fight it. So be involved with your local chamber of commerce, know your tourism board or your DMO, and understand who's who on your city council so you can build those relationships when regulation comes up. Attend the meetings, stay informed about local policies, and build this network of contacts that will ultimately benefit you in the long term. Also, as this episode is titled Legal Latte, Developing a relationship with a lawyer is going to be really beneficial, which you likely already have one from either an employment standpoint, talking to an HR attorney or an attorney that has helped you with contracts previously, developing an owner contract and a guest agreement. I think that having a relationship with a lawyer as an alliance or as an individual business, if you start to face regulation, is very, very helpful. They can help really like with that compliance to make sure that you are dotting your I's and crossing your T's. They can draft contracts for you and they can stay ahead of those legal trends that are starting to change in our industry. With that being said, I think so much of what we can do that isn't on the legal side or attending those meetings is just being a good neighbor, right? Like take out all the like bureaucracy and politics and do what you can to be a good neighbor. And I think there are a couple ways we can do this. So number one, a clause that I think is really helpful in your rental agreements is the good neighbor policy. And really what that means is like, hey, you're staying in somebody else's home in a neighborhood that might have people that live there full time. Do what you can to reduce your noise, to make sure that you're not speeding through the neighborhood if you rented a car. And put your trash where it's supposed to be at the time you're supposed to put it out there, right? Like things that just are being a good person. And then communicate this to your guest, right? Like whether it's in the form of a contract, which I do recommend, and over the phone as like part of your policies. If you have a policy review with guests before they arrive or when they're booking, and just share with them like, hey, we like to remind all of our guests that you are using somebody else's home. We are going to do our very best to make sure you feel as at home as possible. But please be aware of these noise regulations or the fact that you're in a community that's predominantly people that live there full time. Or like, hey, I noticed that you're going to be renting a car. We helped you with that reservation. Just make sure to adhere to the speed limit in the neighborhood. I do know that neighbors keep an eye on that pretty close. It's really just like, let's call it being the good person. <laughs> And I think that once guests can really like understand a level of humanity with you and your company and this experience that you're trying to provide them of making them feel like a local, they will understand and hope. I mean, not everybody, of course, like we all have those guests, you know, the ones I'm talking about. But for the most part, I think the guests can understand this and um, it will help too, right? Like if you can address the trash. God, it feels like trash and noise are the two biggest things that really like create this regulation and an uproar in your community. Um, but if you can address those things ahead of time and proactively and over communicate to your guests to try to prevent those issues. On the other hand, if you have a neighbor that is consistently calling, it's the same person every time. I'm sure so many of us have dealt with that. This I know I have. Make sure that you're building a relationship with that person and communicating to them like, hey, here is what we are doing in our communication with our guests to ensure that these regulations or your wants are being adhered to. And of course, like if they're just an ass, then handle that with the local authorities or if you need to have some type of agreement with this neighbor, have that in place. But proactively be a good neighbor, communicate that to your guests Ensure your guests are respecting the community and contribute positively to that neighborhood. 
I have an important interruption, and it is to discuss AirDNA. So AirDNA's for sale properties feature. Let's talk about it for a second. AirDNA now has a properties for sale functionality where you can find available properties for sale and see their earning potential directly within AirDNA. You don't have to leave. You don't have to go to Zillow. You don't have to go to Excel. You don't have to combine 15 sheets. It is all right there for you in your AirDNA dashboard. Essentially view this new functionality like Zillow for short-term rentals. If you are ready to sign up for AirDNA and take advantage of these incredible features, go to airdna.co slash workflows and espressos and use the code workflows for your first month free. See you there. With that being said, on the spirit or topic of community, community involvement is something else that I think is really important. My really good friends, Ginger and Hunter Harrelson, they are like such a good example of contributing to their community. They're based in Gulf Shores, Alabama. And if you haven't seen them at conferences in their beach ball attire, they like, it's really cute. Their company's called Beach Ball and all of their, like not all of their clothes, their entire wardrobe is branded beach balls. No, but they do have so many great outfits that like have beach balls on them. Super cute. Anyway, Ginger and Hunter are great advocates of Gulf Shores and they feed into the Gulf Shores community by creating alliances, creating groups. Um, Ginger created, I think it's called Girls on the Gulf and is the president of it, which I don't know how she has the, how she can own a business that's that big in Gulf Shores and also run Girls on the Gulf. But they're just examples that they're stewards of Gulf Shores and with their company, right? Like we all understand that when you're going to have guests in town, There are going to be guests that do not treat your community with respect, but if you are known in your community as someone who respects and takes care of your local area, that will help soften these incidents that will, no matter what, come up. So whether that is engaging in community events or throwing community events, supporting local causes, we have at Outpost a very significant part of our budget that goes to donating and supporting local causes in our community. So whether it is sponsoring a youth soccer game or, you know, throwing an event at our coffee shop that Outpost is also supporting, it all goes back to this, hey, we have a business in this community that is providing jobs to so many people and allowing our community to thrive. Ultimately, we're collecting bed tax that's being paid to the local community, but also In the meantime, and in our spare time, we are cleaning up a local park and we are throwing an event that's going to benefit us. I know that it just feels like another thing on your to-do list, but ultimately I think it does pay off with the perception of short-term rental hosts in the area, particularly in communities that have a bad view of you already. You know, be this local and vocal advocate for hosts in your area. And if you don't want to be that person with their microphone, then this is where the alliance comes in. We have a housing trust in our community. I'm based in Jackson Hole. And we have a lot of issues with housing because so much of our land is owned by the National Park Service or the National Forest Service. And so it's really difficult for us to build land, which is causing this massive housing crisis. And the housing that we do have is so expensive that People that are working at our company, myself included, like we can't afford to buy a house. And so one thing that our coffee shop has done, which has been incredible for this, honestly, like perception of all of our businesses in the community and other vacation rental companies have followed suit. We donate 1% of revenue to the local housing trust. And it's really allowed us to build this relationship and has also allowed for, you know, when things come up, I think we're given this grace that other operators might not be given who aren't as involved at the community level, which I think ultimately like all the operators in Jackson do a pretty good job of. So if you take nothing away from this episode, but five sentences, number one, build relationships with your local authorities and chambers and be like, it can be a game changer. Number two, Alliance in the alliances in the industry are going to provide strength in numbers and shared resources. I want to say another sentence, but I said five sentences. Number three, a good lawyer is always going to be an asset to you and not just from a dis- defense perspective, but from a proactive perspective. 
Number four, be a good neighbor. Communicate to your guests to be a good neighbor. Sorry, those two sentences. And number five, be active in your community and give back where you can because it will enhance your reputation in many ways. And also, like, it's just a good thing to do. So made it through regulation and compliance, like pretty much unscathed. I'm feeling good about it. I had a good time. I hope you had a good time. Kelsey in the background had a great time because I had a lot less mess ups than I did on the last episode that I recorded. I hope you all have an amazing week. I cannot believe next week is our last episode. I'm like feeling pretty sad about it, but don't worry. Hopefully we'll be back and with a season two and it's going to be great and we're going to hang out all over again. Thank you for tuning in. I am very excited to see and I'm not going to hear you to see you next week. I'm not going to see you either. I'm very excited for you to hear me next week. Okay. Have a great week. See ya. Bye.